Hello there, science friends, and welcome once again to Photoshop for the Scientist. It's, uh, it's nice to have you here. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to take a very crappy looking uh, bright field image. In this case, it's a slide I've taken with a dissecting microscope. And turn it into something a little more presentable, like we have here. But let me just say right off the bat that I was pretty hesitant to make this video because uh, you really just shouldn't be doing this. Uh, if you can, you know, 99 times out of 100, you should just take your slide, go back to your microscope, figure out whatever settings you need to figure out, and just, just take a, bit, a better picture. This is really for more like if for some reason you've lost or destroyed your slides, or maybe you only have this image file to work with because somebody sent it to you. Uh, because I know there's going to be people out there that are going to say you can't be making these kinds of like data beautification modifications to your images, which I heartily agree with. But I know that during my master's when I was doing this stuff and I was thinking to myself, there's got to be a way that you can apply some kind of like gradient bright field thing to this. Uh, it would have been really handy to have this video just to know. Um, and even if you don't use it for your science, it could be handy for you to have later if you're photoshopping something else. So with all of those caveats aside, let's get to it here. So the first thing we want to do, obviously, is rotate this image 180 degrees, which we can do quite simply by going up to Image and choosing Image Rotation and choosing 180 degrees. And then the next thing that we want to do, which is going to get us actually most of the way there, is just do a pretty tight mask around uh, our little section here to get rid of all of this, these like air bubbles and hairs and all this other crap. So I want to go and choose the Polygonal Lasso tool, which if you don't see, you might see the regular Lasso tool by default. So if you click and hold, you'll see this little uh, fly menu here, and you'll choose Polygonal Lasso. For all the fans of shortcut keys out there, you can just hit Shift-L a couple times to toggle through them all. And then really what we want to do here is just create kind of like a pretty close selection around our little section here. Uh, we don't need to go crazy up along the edge, but you know the closer we can get, the better. I'm going to go kind of quickly here because this, this is not the most exciting thing in the world to watch. Just around the little foot, up by the face, all around the river bend here, just like that, and like that, and there we go. So once we have our nice selection, we'll go here and click the layer mask button to mask out all the other junk that we don't want anymore, and already that's starting to look a little bit better. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is create a new layer and drag it underneath here. And if my default colors are set to black and white, as they are here, and white is my background, I'll hit Control Backspace to fill this layer with white. And uh, yeah, that's starting to look pretty good. So now we're going to get to where the magic of this tutorial happens. Now, you can see from this image, uh, the exposure is kind of off, uh, moving from the left-hand side to the right-hand side here. We're kind of a little overexposed here and a little underexposed on this side. So what I'm going to do is create an adjustment layer, an exposure adjustment layer, and then put a gradient mask on it so that we're only exposing the one side. So to show you how that works, uh, first we go down to Adjustment Layer button here, and we'll choose Exposure. and I find the exposure uh, sliders here, you really don't need to go crazy with them because they can get uh, out of control pretty quickly. But frankly, all I really did here was just kind of tinker around with this slider until I found something that I liked. And what I'm looking for is to kind of expose this side so we don't have like that dark shadowing anymore. We don't have to worry about the left-hand side too much for now because we'll come back to that in a bit. Um, but after some tinkering around, I found that 0.45 was a value that worked for me. So I'm going to type that in and hit enter, and uh, close that off. And so we can see that this side is starting to look pretty good, but now obviously the left-hand side is way overexposed. So what we're going to do is put a gradient mask on this adjustment layer. And to do that, we'll go over to our tools menu here and choose the gradient uh, tool, which if you don't see, you might see the paint bucket tool. But again, if you click and hold, you can select gradient tool. And we want to make sure that we're doing a black to white gradient with a linear gradient, gradient selected. So with that in mind, uh, I'm going to click somewhere near the middle here. And I'm going to hold shift to keep a straight line and maybe drag to about here. You might have to do this a couple times. You can just click and drag as many times as you like. For example, you can click wherever you want. But ultimately, you're looking for something that looks like it kind of balances things out. And to me, this kind of looks like what I'm 
the effect I'm trying to achieve here. And just to show you, uh, if you hold Alt and click your layer mask here, you can see what the mask is doing. So basically, everything from the middle over onto the left-hand side is going to mask out that exposure layer, whereas everything on from this gradient here to the right-hand side is going to let this exposure layer through with uh, a nice kind of easy gradient in between. So I'll hit hold Alt and click that again. And so you can see now things are kind of like a little more balanced. Um, but now we have the issue is that uh, the image itself is starting to look a little overexposed just entirely altogether. So to correct that, I'm going to go down to my adjustment layers and create a level of adjustment layer. And all I'm going to do is take this black slider and drag it up to the edge here, which uh, I've covered the, uh, the levels adjustment layer, I think, in, in one of my ethics videos. So you can have a look. But to do something like this is perfectly fine. Ultimately, all you're doing is just bringing this slider over to stretch this histogram out. And so you're not losing any image data that way. So that's perfectly ethical. <laughs> Mind you, this, this layer is not so much, but, you know, we'll tell you what we can get. And so this, to me, is looking pretty good. Uh, you know, maybe it's still a little on the bright end, and maybe if that's the case, I might go back and put in another brightness contrast layer. Maybe just bump the brightness down a little bit, maybe to a minus 25. And uh, that's starting to look, look pretty good to me. So as I said before, obviously, if you're going to be making these kinds of adjustments, it's kind of in a last-ditch effort, and you don't, want to be making any like you don't want to start doing your image analysis now you don't want to be going and poking around and you know comparing intensity levels between different staining areas especially well mostly because we've done this uh, gradient mask here and you don't want to be going and comparing this image to other images that you've taken unless you've done the exact same literally the exact same adjustments to all of your other images which, if you're going to have to be going through and making these kinds of adjustments to all of your images, you got you have kind of a problem. Um, so I know I'm kind of sounding like a broken record here, but I just want to be very clear that uh, we <laughs> these, I, like I said, I feel a little sketchy putting this video in the first place. <clears throat> Anyways, so with that in mind, uh, I think we are pretty much done here with this lesson. Uh, so as always, if you have any questions or comments, um, please feel free to leave them below and I will do my best to address them. Um, but otherwise, I think I will sign off by saying, as always, you worked hard to get that image data of yours, so why not spend the extra time to work a little harder and make sure that they look amazing. Okay, well, that does it for today, friends. Thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time.